Hey folks, how you doing? Yes, this is the Wayne S. Pierce Show podcast. Hey, special announcement. Yo, hey, hello. 3 o'clock p.m. today, the 9th of July, 2014. 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. The live broadcast of the Wayne S. Pierce Show and the Views Express Live. Going to have a combined show today. Same two-hour format, so I get done an hour earlier. <laughs> so, anyway, yes. So, how are y'all doing today on this 9th of July 2014? God, it's July already. Can you God. email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com, freeamericaradio at usa.com, or go to the website, which is thewaynespierceshow.weebly.com. I know a lot of dots there. The Wayne S. Pierce Show. Weebly.com. Now, for some of the people that listen to the Views Express Live, it wasn't on yesterday because we were having rain and thunder that was rocking the whole you know place here and everything. So it was really bad. So I didn't want to chance it. And sure enough, <laughs> the power went out. Okay. <laughs> So I knew, and I looked at my watch, and I went, yeah, it's about an hour. Yep, boom, went out. So uh, I knew it. So anyway, <clears throat> and it was only out for about 20, 25 minutes, something like that. But anyway, yeah, so that's why there was no show yesterday. I just knew the power was going to go out during my show. And yes, right at the, like, five minutes into the second hour, boom, went out. I'm like, crap okay <laughs> so anywho hey go to free america radio on facebook give you a heads up of what's coming up on the uh, up on the special show at 3 p.m pacific 6 p.m eastern yes we have a lot going on uh former uh, mayor of new orleans ray nagan uh is uh sentenced to 10 years in prison for all sorts of good things um yeah <laughs> sentenced to 10 years in prison for what well go to free america radio on facebook and check it out you'll see his happy little mug shot there um 10 years in prison for his conviction in bribery money laundering and other corruption charges according to wkrg in new orleans prosecutors sought a 15-year sentence and said the actions of which He was convicted, spanned his two terms as mayor, including the chaotic years after Hurricane Katrina hit in 2005. So, yes, former mayor of New Orleans, sentenced to 10 years. And he's the same one that, uh, you know, Bush shook hands with during Katrina. And he's the same one that allowed the military to go all over New Orleans, even in the affluent neighborhoods, and take all their guns. Uh, that guy. Free America Radio on Facebook. Scroll on down. Asleep at the wheel. Obama slammed for missing border surge crisis. Yes, because he was in Colorado playing, doing something. What the hell was he doing? Oh, playing pool is what he was doing. Yeah. There you go. Oh, and if you don't think that the uh, government is, uh, you know, they're not coming after us. No, they wouldn't do anything like that. Conservativetribune.com. Border, protest, uh, bro- border protesters prepare to be detained by Fed's riot squad. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, go look up the Mayak report and other uh, reports where it says that uh, patriots and uh, uh, Ron Paul supporters and libertarians and all these folks, the uh, citizens of the United States of America are gonna are now the domestic terrorists, and we can see that now. So anyway, uh, can I get more frust- Can I get more frustrated at this? I don't think so. But anyway, hey, the obligatory break is coming up, and I'm gonna promo some stuff so hey sit tight be right back free america radio at usa.com is the email address i shall return right after this listen to the diana and wayne's grab bag potpourri talk show friday nights at 8 p.m pacific 11 p.m eastern 
right here on Spreaker.com. Are you tired of listening to boring online late night radio? Then listen to Late Night in the Midlands with your host, Michael Vera. 9 p.m. to 12 midnight Eastern. Go to www.latenightinthemidlands.com for more information. Join the National Down Syndrome Society's My Great Story campaign to honor and celebrate the amazing stories of the 400,000 Americans with Down Syndrome. If you had Down Syndrome, tell us about your achievements, dreams, and aspirations. If you know someone who has Down Syndrome, tell us how they've inspired you. Visit ndss.org slash stories to share your great story. From politics to pop culture, current events and human interest stories, and even the paranormal, an eclectic radio adventure, he discusses it all and takes your calls. He's Spencer Hughes on The Spencer Hughes Show on blogtalkradio.com. How you doing, folks? This is the, uh, what is this, the 9th of July, 2014. This is the Wayne S. Pierce Show podcast. How you doing? Yes, I'm not live until 3 p.m. Pacific. No, it's not a new time, it's just a special time. 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 p.m. Eastern. So come join me uh, on the Views Express Live and the Wayne S. Pierce Show. Combined show, you know. Why do I have two shows, right? <laughs> Things are changing all over the place. Stay tuned for more news about that. Anyway, or go to the website. Yes. Go to Free America Radio Network website. It's freeamericaradio.us. Freeamericaradio.us. Um, thank you. Anyway, what do we got? What do we got? Let's go, let's go to the Free America Radio uh, Facebook page, shall we? Uh, yeah, the I just read you a little bit up there about uh, former uh, New Orleans mayor, Ray Nagin. Yeah. You know, this border crisis, it, it is a crisis. It, it's, not, it's no longer just, well, you know, no, 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 no. It's a freaking invasion, folks, by our own domestic army. Uh, army. Yeah. Remember 2008? Remember, remember when, when then Senator uh, Barack Obama was running for president, and he said we need, or maybe it was after. Correct me if I'm wrong. He said we needed a civilian military, a civilian military force, well funded like the military and all that. Right? Remember that? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now you see why. Because he doesn't give a crap about you and I, and never has, never will. We stand up to him and we say, we don't like your unconstitutional executive orders, and guess what he does? He thumbs his nose at us. And we go down to the border to protect our country, and he's going, no, screw you people. We're going to bring these illegal aliens in anyway. We don't care what the citizens of the United States say. This is what Washington, D.C. is. Yeah. And we're out here busting our, you know, humps while he's off playing pool in Colorado and playing golf elsewhere, and he's, you know, not being the leader that we need, right? Think about that one for a minute. Oh, and while he's out playing pool in Colorado, Texas and California militia unite to defend the border. It's about damn time. Conservativetribune.com. Let's go uh, read that one. I'm going to read this one, too, on the other show later on at 3 p.m. Pacific. <clears throat> the lack of action on the border security from Obama administration has prompted a wide variety of responses. State officials close 
to the situation in Texas and Arizona have called for federal assistance but have received a little response. Now, let's just make it clear they haven't received a response at all. Uh, leaving them to do what they can with their own resources. Civilian protesters have coordinated to challenge the transportation of illegal immigrants throughout the country by Department of Homeland Security agents. Other civilian other civilians organized into militia groups have moved troops to Arizona and Texas to assist in closing a border that the federal government seems content to leave open despite growing violence. Now... In Cal- and now California militia members have united with their comrades in Texas to support state efforts, challenge Obama's apathy, and assist in securing the nation's southern border. Fox News said this, Free Republic founder Jim Robinson posted this on the popular conservative internet forum on Friday evening. We have independent units from the Bolinas Border Patrol and the Central Valley Citizens Militia joining forces with independent citizen uh, militia units of Texas to defend our southern border in Texas to protest Obama's lawless open borders policy and to rally support for Governor Perry to officially call out the Guard units and Texas militia units at his disposal to defend the border. Lawsuits will not cut it. The invasion is happening now. Action must be taken now. Lawsuits have indeed been threatened, and more will no doubt come as this president and his administration continue to ignore their duty, trample on the rights of Americans, and flout both the law and the Constitution. Under the guise of humanitarianism, Obama is cynically using the hopes of tens of thousands of immigrants for his own personal gain, despite the dire consequences for them and for his own citizens. Closing the border with civilian uh, militia may not be the optimal manner in which to address the growing border crisis, but it certainly tops the alternative, which, from the Washington Obamacrats, appear to be nothing. Exactly. Okay. So how do we... I've said it before, and I'll say it again. Yeah, okay. Here's one side of the spectrum. We have a humanitarian crisis. Excuse me. We have a humanitarian crisis with people being sick and all that. And I would rather see these people, you know, get the help they need because they're sick. Hello. They don't we don't want the diseases and all that over here, do we? Okay. Let's think smart about this, shall we? So let's help them out. Let's do what they have to do, do what they need to do, and also the criminals, the MS-13s and and all that, and the drug cartels sending their people over as well. Let's just pack their asses up and move them back to Mexico or wherever the hell they came from and uh, because we don't want them here either. Okay. Um, <clears throat> humanitarian, <clears throat> excuse me, humanitarian, uh, the humanitarian efforts are needed. The law enforcement slash military option to kick out all these drug gangs and all that is also an option. What's it going to come to? Actually, why is it the way it is? It's because Obama doesn't care about you. He doesn't care about any of us. He's just like, open the damn border. The American people are going, are you nuts? Close the damn border. Can you say civil war? Because I guarantee you, you're going to see some blue helmets wandering around somewhere. By the way, they're already here. Yeah, probably somewhere last October, November, somewhere around in there. Probably the first of the year I even heard where, uh, get this, in Hawaii for uh, disaster relief training, guess who shows up? The Chinese military. Why? Oh, because wait, they need to train. No, they don't. We can send people over. We can send people over to China and help them with their own disaster relief training. We don't. They don't have to come here. Okay, we've done it before. <laughs> we've we've gone to uh, England. We've gone to other countries and helped their firefighters. You know, train, and that's what we've done. Why come over here? And that's not all, folks. 
We've got Saudi military here. We've got Israeli military here. We've got Iraqi military here. We've got Russian military here. Yes, Russian military on the soil of the U.S. Yeah, go go look it up. I'm I. You don't have to believe me, and I'm not suggesting you should. I'm just saying this is what I've heard. Go look it up. If I've overlooked something, please let me know. <laughs> I'm okay with that. All right. It's not going to be pretty. This border crisis is not going to be pretty. It's not. It's. It wasn't meant to be. It was meant. Obama meant to open the borders. Period. That's it. Just take the. That's. That's why when all that pressure was on to build the fence, he's going. Yeah, I'll fund it. Yeah, no problem. Not one dime to building the fence. Not one dime. It's all gone. Gone to his cronies, to his bosses. I would say. Right. I know some of you bleeding heart people out there are saying, well, you know, uh, they come from really collapsed countries and they need a place to go. And uh, I said it before, man. If they're sick, stop them at the border. Get some, you know, doctors without borders down there and find out what's going on and see who needs treatment and blah, blah, blah. Let's make sure none of that crap gets over in the U.S. We got enough to deal with here. We don't need that. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) We just don't. All right. And the criminals, pack their asses up and ship them back to their port. Of, you know, just get them out of here. I don't care where they get. You dump them off in the Atlantic. I don't care. They're criminals. Send them back home. Yeah, when you consider the fact that our government has funded their criminal activity. You ever heard of Fast and Furious? Yeah, Eric Holder got his hand caught in a cookie jar on that one, didn't he? So there you go. Anyway, Free America Radio on Facebook. Let's leave at the wheel. Obama slammed for missing borders surge crisis. As, uh, and uh, it says, as Obama administration scrambles for billions in emergency funding to address the surge on the U.S.-Mexico border, it is facing another accusation that it was asleep at the wheel, or it was asleep as a crisis evolved. No, actually, no. He created it. He created it. Uh... Have you heard this phrase? I've mentioned it before. Problem, reaction, solution. The Hegelian dialectic. They create a big problem. Hey, look, oh, wow. We react. Yeah, do something about it. So they solve the problem. Roman Empire. Go back and look at, at history. Roman Empire did that. I guess a bunch of people were sitting around and got done with their hedonistic little things that they were doing with each other and decided to, uh, you know, they got bored one day and decided to go blow up a building or burn down a building in their city in Rome and blame it on somebody else. That's called a false flag event, folks. But that's the Hegelian dialectic. Create a problem, public reacts, and then the people that created the problem come back with a solution. That's exactly what's going on here, folks. I don't like it either. But oh well, we got to do something. The Not only have they got their hands caught in a cookie jar, the cookie jar fell off the shelf and broke all over the place, and now there's cookies all over the place, and now they're allowing all kinds of people to come in and pick up all kinds of cookies. You know what I'm saying? Okay. <laughs> I know, that's a weird, <laughs> weird analogy, isn't it? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> From Renew America uh, on uh, Facebook, Maureen Scott shared this uh, picture. Compassionate solution to the illegal immigrant crisis. Give them a shower. Give them new clothes. Give them medical care. Give them a happy meal. Give them a bus ticket and send them home. And tell the government and the people in their countries to have compassion and take care of them. Then... Make Obama enforce the existing laws and spend the $3.5 billion. It's more than that, folks. It's cruising around 9 or $10 billion right now. He is requesting to care for these illegals to instead hire and arm more border agents and build a longer, stronger, higher fence at the border to keep future illegals out of the country and stop advertising amnesty to encourage more to cross and try to infiltrate our country illegally. Yeah. Sounds like a perfect idea, doesn't it? Yeah, but folks, whoops, wait a minute. Clicked on the wrong thing here. Um, 
here's the deal, folks. You and about 5, 10, 15 other of your buddies standing out in your city protesting on a corner, that's going to work because it's going to get, you know, the, no, the your, your shouting and your, your you know, complaints are going to get to the city. But, oh boy, I hate when videos just start automatically. That's stupid. Um, that's cool. Be out on the sheet, protest. What's better is going into your city councils or county board of supervisors that are open to the public for public, you know, responses, going in there and slamming them with the Constitution and give case law. Just don't go out in there unarmed. I mean, take case law with you, okay? <laughs> I mean, it's going to take a little work on your on your end. But go in there with documents saying this, 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 this and shove it in their face. Look what happened in, in uh, what was that, Oterra, New Mexico. Oterra, New Mexico. Uh, the city council got together and they were doing their meeting and all this, and the citizens got pissed off enraged to the point of taking the meeting over and forcing the city council members to leave. Yeah, that's the way it should be. If you can out-shout, out-do, and, out, and, and give as much evidence to them as you can, you're basically holding them responsible and accountable for what they decide in your city then you're going to make them do what you tell them to do. Chances are, though, they're, going to, they're just going to come back a day later and just go, yeah, yeah, we're going to do it anyway. Whatever it is they were going to do. Why? Because they're criminal. They're criminal. I mean, look what I just read in that meme, in that picture. You know? That last line, and stop advertising amnesty, not that one. Uh, but how, you know, they, these people cross the border and infiltrate our country. There's people that come into the city, they learn English, they do all that, they spend, and it takes years, it's not overnight. Then they infiltrate city councils and start saying, well, maybe we should, you know, they, it's criminal. Do you open? Let me ask you this on a on a on a city level. Do you open up your city to anybody, or do you have the infrastructure to pay attention to who's going, uh, who's coming and going in your city, and if they commit a crime, do you have the infrastructure to take care of that? Well, on the border in uh, Marietta, uh, California, you know, in the facility there, and hour and a half away is Tijuana. They don't have that. They don't have. They have the border patrol. Yeah, the border patrol. But they're freaking useless. They're like a freaking hangnail. They're they're just freaking useless in their pain. There's not enough of them. So they've rendered themselves useless. And the federal government has told them. I think a couple of weeks ago, told them to just stand down. And a couple of months ago, I saw an article that said, you know, told the border patrol just scare them. You know, scare the illegals back over the border. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so, but anyway, yeah, they come here, they infiltrate, they do all that. And, and look what happened to May. It was at, um, Bell, California and, uh, Maywood, California. I think it was Maywood. I, I, I got to go look that up. The city council, the people, the citizens of those cities were going, wait a minute, our mayor's making how much a year? What? Then the city and a certain people were investigating all of that and found out that, yes, both those cities were corrupt to the core. And so they started filing charges. A couple of people were arrested, and I think one mayor of a city was arrested and were thrown in jail. And the city councils of, of uh, you know, the city councils just abandon themselves they just abandon the city or new people came in or whatever and it's just you know it's a fuster cluck of people you know what i mean so you don't want that you don't want your city to fail so why would you allow these people in your city to infiltrate well they they bring some good ideas god that comes right out of the liberal pot you know 
I may not agree with Obama, but he's done some good stuff. Yeah. Is that after you took your head out of the sand you said that or what? Jeez. Anyway. Hey, I got liberal friends. And they look at me and they're going, you know, I think you were right. <laughs> I'm like, well, you, duh. <laughs> you know? Uh, anyway. Even if you protest, folks, you're going to get slammed. You're going to get slammed. Conservativetribune.com, breaking border protesters prepared to be detained by Fed's riot squad. Marietta, California has become the central focus of the immigration crisis as protesters continue to gather and hold demonstrations geared toward stopping buses from dropping loads of illegal, dropping off loads of illegal immigrants in their town. Uh, The group of patriots holding these protests have grown tired of the lack of action from the White House in dealing with this crisis and have decided to take matters into their own hands to fight for the protection of their communities from the strain of having hundreds of illegals dropped off in the area with no support system. Protesters consisting of a variety of nationalities and backgrounds have managed to turn back buses headed to Marietta area three times now and say they plan on sticking around as long as necessary, even if it means being detained by federal uh, authorities, a threat that might prove to be real. So, yeah. Um, (laughs) Big problem there, folks. Huge. Uh, Reports have surfaced indicating that new buses coming into Marietta will be accompanied by, get this, federal agents in full riot gear ready to force protesters back if necessary. Despite this threat, protesters say they will not back down, opting to prepare for a showdown instead. Okay. What does that mean, folks? You know what that means? You got a legitimate gripe, a grievance, as the First Amendment says. Petition or, or, you know, petition to government, you know, for grief. Let me read that to you. Let me, let me, let me just before the bottom of the hour break here, let me go to the Bill of Rights as I'm typing it here. And let me give you that last part of the <clears throat> First Amendment. It's on the very last part, and it says, We have a right not only to free speech, expression, religion, or worship, or or press, but we have a right to peaceably assemble, which is what these people are doing. And we have a right to petition the government for a redress of grievances. Well, don't you think a protest out in the middle of a you know town like this is your is you're petitioning the government for the redress of grievances? A redress of gr- grievances? Huh? What does that say? That says your government doesn't give a crap about you. Obama in Washington, D.C. does not give one freaking crap about you at all. Period. A lot of people don't like that. A lot of people don't like me saying that. I don't care. It's real. It's true. It's factual. And if you don't like it, keep your head in the sand because obviously that's where you like it. Hey, folks. Email me. FreeAmericaRadio at USA.com. That's FreeAmericaRadio at USA.com. Go to TheWayneSPierceShow.Weebly.com. TheWayneSPierceShow.Weebly.com. Check that site out as well. And uh, in a few minutes, I shall return. So sit tight. Don't go anywhere. I shall return right after this. Eastland Radio Repertory Theater is looking for you. Are you a voice actor? Do you want to hone your abilities? Please send your audition clips to eastlandradiotheater at usa.com. We are currently looking for voice actors to fill certain character roles in an ongoing radio play in development. Please send your audition clips to Eastland Radio Theater at USA. 
Gmail.com. The world as we know it is changing. We must speak out against the tyranny in our country. Stand up. Speak out. Get involved. Live Truth Radio. The reality underneath the honesty. LiveTruthRadio.com For all you independent artists, musicians, and filmmakers, there is a place for you. Radio Rock 92.6 The Blitz. Go to RadioRockTheBlitz.blogspot.com Hey, welcome back to the Wayne S. Pure Show podcast. It is the 9th of July, 2014. Ha, ha, ha. Hey, it's July already. Holy crap. How was your fourth last week? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh-huh, it was great. Um, Thefreethoughtproject.com. You can go to Free America Radio on Facebook. Check this one out. Scroll on down a little bit. You'll find it. Uh, Thefreethoughtproject.com. Local cops are listening to your cell phone. Fed's telling them to keep it hush-hush. What? Uh-huh. U.S. pushing local police departments to keep quiet on cell phone surveillance technology. Uh, Go search, go to your favorite search engine and look up Stingray. Okay. U.S. pushing local cops to stay mum on surveillance. This is Washington from the Associated Press. The Obama administration has been quietly advising local police not to disclose details about surveillance technology they are using to sweep up a basic cell phone data from entire neighborhoods. The Associated Press has learned. Citing security reasons, the U.S. has intervened in routine state public records cases and criminal trials regarding the uh, use of technology. This has resulted in police departments withholding materials or having or heavily censoring documents in rare instances when they disclose any about the purchase and use of such powerful surveillance equipment. Federal involvement in local open records proceedings is unusual. It comes at a time when President Barack Obama has said he welcomes a debate on government surveillance and called for a more transparent, uh, called for more transparency about spying in the wake of disclosures about classified federal surveillance programs. Thank you, Edward Snowden. One well-known type of surveillance equipment is known as a stingray. See, there you go. An innovative way of law enforcement to track cell phones used by suspects and gather evidence. The equipment tracks cell phones into identifying their owner's account information and transmitting data to police as if it were a phone company tower. That allows police to obtain cell phone information without having to ask for help from service providers such as Verizon and AT&T and can locate a phone without the user even making a call or sending a text message. But without more details about how the technology works and under what circumstances it is used, it's unclear whether the technology might violate a person's constitutional rights or whether it's a good investment of taxpayer dollars. Last night, usually I go online at radioreference.com and I go into my county, which is Washoe County here in Nevada, and I listen to the local police scanner and stuff like that, you know, the the transmissions, and I heard last night, I heard one of the officers call another officer on one of the other channels they use and said, you know, uh, something about a ping, okay? Did we ping the phone? Did we find it? You know, that kind of thing. Um, Now, if you're wondering what a ping is, you ever get close to a computer or to a speaker and your phone, you hear that, that weird sound coming out of the speakers? That's your cell phone company pinging your phone to see where you are. If you go, if you have an Android phone like I have, you can go into the settings and go into, uh, you know, the area, uh, 
I, I don't here let me tell you what it is I don't want to <laughs> let me tell you what it is you go into the system settings and you go to um, location services and I'm looking at my phone right now and it shows mine's an Android so it has Google and GPS and location search and all that and uh, those are all checked and that's how they find you that's how they ping you or not how they ping you they ping you but that's one of the things that has to be turned on for them to find you yeah so isn't that wonderful uh the rest of the article is over at uh, news.yahoo.com under uh u.s pushing local cops uh to stay you know sorry uh, <clears throat> to stay mum on surveillance yeah so there you go yeah, they're tracking you. They don't care. Like I said, the government doesn't give one iota about you. They don't. I mean, look at what they're doing to the veterans. I just saw a thing last week where a veteran finally got his notice uh, for his appointment. You know, at the veterans' hospital. Yeah, he'd been dead for two years. Okay? Well, that's just an oversight. No, it's not. But they treat illegals, they give them free everything. It's called, oh, this just, yeah, so, you know. From MyDailyInformer.com, eyewitness warns of U.N. troops in Texas, quote, 30 U.N. vehicles fully loaded with combat uh, c- prepared troops, unquote. Let's go take a look at that, shall we? It's over at MyDailyInformer.com. Uh, an eyewitness... Uh, Facebook post warning is going viral that shares one Vietnam veteran's recent experience down in Dallas, Texas. The warning reposted by American Gun Rights Texas, uh, who are requesting confirmation of this post. There is no confirmation. Uh, That's why they're requesting it. Warns of 30 United Nations vehicles fully loaded with combat-prepared troops driving down I-30 towards Garland, Texas. Are these troops, are are these UN troops here preparing for economic collapse in America? Is this related to Iran um, ships approaching the U.S. border? Is this tied to this warning from John Moore via Susan uh, Duclos? Military vehicles move through U.S. at night, hidden in the day. The Alex Jones video from days ago appears to be a warning, appears to be warning us of this, uh, of exactly this, quote, the U.N. takeover of America. Uh, I've seen videos, people have put up videos of both trains in their city. As a matter of fact, somebody in my hometown of Stockton, California, did a video and put it up on Facebook saying this is what he saw and it was train cars and car just train cars full of military equipment going north okay and then shortly after that I saw a video of uh, someone in Texas shot a video while driving on the freeway of three or four UN UN vehicles MRAPs you name it and they were white and or you know whatever the color they are and they had UN on the side of it yeah <sighs> yeah i don't know folks i mean you're going to sit around and wonder how the relationship is between Kanye West and Kim Kardashian uh, who's winning some Dancing with a star competition. What, what, you gonna? Uh, if you got your head in the sand, well, guess what part is sticking up out of the sand? Yeah, I thought so. <sighs> Who's doing all this? Why? Why are they doing it? For years, for over a hundred and some odd years, probably a hundred and fifty or so years. The the elites, the barons, the big railroad barons, the gold, the you know oil, you know, all that, all these rich billionaires of that time, uh, didn't want people. They they wanted slaves, is what they wanted. They they wanted slaves. Now, how, why do I say that? Well, you look at any modern business, not only of that time in the eighteen hundreds or so, but also now. 
companies are making billions and billions of dollars, big ones, you know, companies that have 2,000, 3,000, 5,000 employees, making billions of dollars, but they start out people at minimum wage. I mean, you look at medium-sized businesses, and I, I look at those are like, you know, the fast food joints, Taco Bell, Burger King, McDonald's, you know, they make millions of dollars a year, and they're paying people minimum wage? Well, McDonald's, just a couple of weeks ago, I saw an article where McDonald's is putting in 7,000 self-serve kiosks. They won't have cashiers. It's right there. Punch in what you want, slide your card, boom, paid for. You know, within five minutes, you're in and out. Or sit there and eat it. So, and this was the, 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 this was the result, the, the picture in the article that I saw as well, and red was in result to McDonald's employees wanting $15 an hour. Folks, if you go to the Bay Area to San Francisco, San Mateo, Oakland, San Jose, $15 an hour doesn't get you a decent apartment. You'd have a well, one bedroom apartment in San Francisco is about 1800 bucks a month. I think I'd have to <laughs> have to go look, but 1200, I think the last time I checked really one bedroom apartment yeah <laughs> okay $15 an hour ain't going to buy you ain't going to rent you a $1200 a month apartment okay <laughs> not going to happen all right even at $25 an hour you're not going to live decently in San Francisco Okay, and that's just one example. I mean, you can look at places like Chicago and Dallas, uh, Chicago, Illinois, Dallas, Texas, New York City, New York, Manhattan. You know, uh, New York, you know, stuff like that. It doesn't matter. And besides that, n- numb nuts. Think about this: you got to pay your employees fifteen bucks an hour because that's what they said well, they want. You got to raise your prices. And guess what? Those people just making fifteen bucks an hour, it's not going to change. They made they made eight nine ten maybe you know but their buying power with that dollar is not going to change. The place has to raise their prices. Everybody has to raise their prices to accommodate for some schmuck that wants to make fifteen bucks an hour. Think about it. Pebble in a pond, folks. Pebble in a pond. You throw a pebble in a pond, and that duck is sitting about 35, 40 feet away. You. You know, throw that pebble in that pond right down, you know, maybe 10 feet away from you. That wave is going to affect that duck. So no matter what happens, no matter what people do, it's going to affect the person next to them. Okay? And when you look at this, if you look at this nightmare we call minimum wage, it's affecting everybody. And here's... Something that I know, just crunch the numbers yourself, you'll figure it out. Minimum wage isn't a living wage. Guess who, guess who, 40 or was it 45, 50 years ago, something like that. Guess who pushed for a minimum wage? Back then it was a living wage, but guess who pushed for it? Just take a wild guess. The unions, the ones that are now corrupt to the nth degree pushed for it yeah you're in a union yeah don't you know why just get out of it you know why because they're corrupt number one and if you work in a union shop but you got somebody next to you that isn't part of the union they don't have to be in a right to work state by the way you don't have to join but you're paying for that guy and on the other hand he's also pissed off that he's not union but he's paying union dues why You, you see what i mean It's working against you now. Being part of a union 20, 30 years ago in smaller regional areas, such as where I grew up in Stockton, California, worked really well because there wasn't that mass to push against the unions or to push against, you know, low wages on either side of the spectrum. You go to cities like Sacramento or New York or Seattle or, you know, Fort Worth, Dallas, Fort Worth or Miami, you, you know, unions are corrupt inside and out. Push against all, you push against them all you want. The union thugs will just, you know, do something to push your business out of the way. 
They can do it all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, go look it up. I mean, you don't have to believe me. You can just look at the stories. You know? It's it's amazing. It's just amazing that people don't understand this. But who who's controlling all of that? We just had last month in June, we had... Uh, we had uh, the Bilderberg meeting, yeah, and now the mainstream after so many freaking years of the Bilderberg group being together, uh, the mainstream media is now talking about them. Who are these people? And you know, but then they wash it over and spin it their own liberal way, their own Marxist way, saying, "Oh, they're not trying to control anything. They're just trying to set policy to help things." What do you think setting policy is, numb nuts? It's controlling things right on the backs of the United Nations, who is now in Detroit, using their power to determine the future of Detroit in terms of the water, because people aren't paying their bills because they don't want to. That's just bottom line. They don't want to. So now the UN is coming in and saying, you know, well, you got to do this, you got to do that, well, you know, whatever. Well, the emergency management, uh, emergency financial guy that went in here, yeah, he just said, you got to get rid of all your public, you know, unions. You got to stop all this because it's just costing the city too much money. The U.N. stepped in with the water thing, blah, blah, blah. Guess what? <laughs> Speaking of the U.N., a little side note about this border crisis. The U.N. is now weighing in on the border crisis. Told you, the U.N. military troops are here. They're on the U.S. soil. Numbers, folks. There are more of us than there are of them. And if it took 3% of the colonists back in 1775 to beat the crap out of the British Empire, which was uh, the British Army, which was the biggest army of that time, took 3% of the colonists to kick their ass back over to the, you know, their own country. What do you think is going to happen if over 200 million people stand up all at once, all armed with multiple weapons, tells the UN and the United, uh, you know, the uh, Washington, D.C., we've had enough. What do you think is going to happen? It's going to make a birthday party in the Central Park look tame compared to what's going to happen. I'm not looking forward to it. I don't want it to happen. But it will happen at some point, even if it's regional, even if three or four or five different areas of the United States breaks out in civil war, you're still going to have this massive uprising of people against the government. And then it will be the epitome of the us against them scenario. (laughs) And we're not going to like it, folks. We don't have... Prior to 1871, that's the Constitution I I stand on. That's the Bill of Rights I stand on. Prior to 1871, the principles, not so much. I mean, there's a lot of things in there after that that were put together that, you know, helped and all that. That's fine. I'm talking principles, not literal, you know what I mean? Not legalistic form of, you know, whatever. I stand on the Constitution and the Bill of Rights prior to 1871. What do I mean by that? Corporations took over in 1871, five years after the Civil War. Because you know why? (laughs) We were broke. We were stone cold broke. We could not rebuild a freaking house. Okay, We, (laughs) we were broke, folks. Oh, but they had lots of money out here on the West Coast, didn't they? You know, it was 1849 when California was founded, and uh, uh, and I think 1848, close to January of 1849, they found, I, I don't know its specific dates, but they found gold at Sutter, at Sutter's Mill, was it Sutter's Mill or Sutter's Fort, where Sutter's Fort is, I guess, but uh, in California. So 1849, California became part of the United States, and uh, then you had all that stuff going on. That's 1849. And then, what, 12 years later, bang, Civil War over on the East Coast? Think about that, folks. 1849, California became part of the United States. 1861 to 1865, 
We had a civil war. The South wanted to secede. It had nothing to do with slavery, so shut your big damn cake holes. It had everything to do with secession because uh, Confederate President Jefferson Davis decided, no, I'm not going to follow Abraham Lincoln anymore. Screw him. We're going to you know, do what we need to. And he rallied a whole lot of people for secession. And Texas is still talking about secession today. So is Georgia. So is uh, you know, other states as well down there. Alabama, I think, gave up. Uh, they're not talking about it, but yeah, he, he just, Jefferson Davis looked at president Lincoln and just went, screw you, you know, we're not doing this. And then bang, you know, big civil war, you know, and the civil war was over in 1865. Right. And then in April of that year, it was, you know, yeah, April of that year, I think some, uh, Confederate, uh, sympathizer, uh, by the name of John Wilkes Booth, decided, you know what, he's got to go. I think he was paid to do it, although some of the things I've found, I can't verify that he was, you know, part of a bigger group that wanted to kill President Lincoln, but we all know what happened in April of 1865. And um, so at that point, six years after that, yeah, Somebody had a bright idea of selling the country off. <laughs> Actually, it was the Act of 1871, which formed what is now called Washington, D.C. It was a 10-mile square piece of land. And, uh, well, um, yeah, went from there. Yeah. Uh, by the way, if you crunch the numbers and you uh, put the puzzle pieces together and you, you know, uh, connect the dots and, and follow the money... You'll find that the uh, Washington, D.C. was the military arm of a bigger organization. The Vatican was the religious arm of this bigger organization. And the city of London, not London, England, the city of London within London, England, was the financial arm of the bigger picture. That would be the Rothschild family over there. And over at Wolf, yeah, Wolf's blog, wolfessblog.wordpress.com, Global Puppet Masters exposed the eight families that own the Federal Reserve. 1913, President Woodrow Wilson signed, behind closed doors, two documents, Internal Revenue Act and the Federal Reserve Act. And, yes... We now have a Federal Reserve, a private corporation set up by the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and a few other billionaires of that time for their own personal money to go into. What happened after 1913? We had this little thing called World War I that started. Well, guess who loaned us the money? <laughs> guess who loaned us the money to fight that war? It was not only the Rockefellers over here, it was the Rothschilds over there. Oh, guess what? By the way, yes, the Rockefellers loaned us, the United States, the money to go to war with our troops in World War I. Yes. But guess what? The Rothschilds in England were funding the Germans. Hello. Yeah, playing... <laughs> they were playing chess, folks. Geopolitical chess at that point. Well, if that's not fascinating to you how about world war ii 1941 to 1945 guess who was over in germany funding and building and creating the german war machine and of course he got popped by the federal government for doing so by the uh, american government that was none other than the grandpa prescott bush yes grandpa Father of George H.W. and Grandpa George W. Yeah, he was over there helping Hitler. Hello? Can you go check that one out, too? Yeah. Prescott Bush. Yeah. So, our history is full of criminals. Okay? <laughs> you know, some historians say that President Ulysses S. Grant, who, you know, accepted the surrender of the confederate army in the civil war uh, some people say that he was the most corrupt president he was the, like worthless 
And years later, people are saying, no, it was, you know, it was Roosevelt. It was, no. And then later on, it was Jimmy Carter. No, I think, I think now we know who the worst president of the United States is, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, who, who are the puppet masters in all of this? Uh, that would be the four horsemen of banking would be Bank of America, J.P. Morgan Chase, Citigroup, and Wells Fargo. Own Exxon Mobil, Royal Dutch Shell, BP, and Chevron Texaco. In tandem with Deutsche Bank, BNP, Bank uh, National de Paris, Paris, Barclays, and other European old money behemoths. So go check that one out. Who are the directors? Daniel Davison of J.P. Morgan Chase, Richard Tucker of Exxon Mobil, Daniel Roberts of Citigroup, and Marshall Schwartz of Morgan Stanley. Shall I go on? It's right there at Free America Radio on Facebook. You cannot miss it. Global Puppet Masters exposed eight families that own the Federal Reserve. Okay. That, see, isn't that crazy? We put our money in a bank, right? And then the bank says, oh, we can use that money to loan out to people for businesses and homes and other things. And then we don't see a dime of that, you know, the payments coming back in, whether it be in interest payments or whatever. We don't see any of that. So banks are ripped, okay? Okay. I, I unfortunately have to have my money in a bank because, you know, I got some stuff. You know what I'm saying? I got, you know. But, <clears throat> what do we do? What do we do? Do we conveniently do things because they're convenient? Or do we do the right thing and step up and say, hey, wait a minute, we can't do this anymore? Do we look at our federal government or our banking and our you know utility company or whatever, mortgage company, housing authorities, a homeowners association? Do we just step up and go, you know what? No, we're not doing this anymore. We the people have spoken. We're not doing this anymore. You don't like it? Tough. And if you keep pushing your issues, we're going to take you to court. By the way, homeowners associations are nothing more than micro-fascist organizations. And by the way, if you go look up who holds them and who owns them, it's probably going to be one of the people I just mentioned in the list of banks. Yeah. So you tell me. And why can your mortgage be sold to another organization without you, without them even notifying you? Huh? That should be illegal right there. But it's not, because you know why? Our government does not give a crap about you. At all. You got to take care of yourself. You got to step up to the plate. You got to do what you got to do. And if you have to get up in somebody's face and shove the Constitution in their face and shove the laws and case law in their face, then, hey, do it peacefully. (laughs) You know, and then if they push you around, you know, as my dad used to say, if they push you, knock their teeth down their throat. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, Dad. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't do that. But I do, I don't condone uh, aggressive violence. I do condone, uh, I do support defense, very aggressive defense if I have to. But anyway, folks, hey, email me, freeamericaradio at usa.com, freeamericaradio at usa.com. Go to thewaynespierceshow.weebly.com, and hopefully you'll make it at 3 p.m. Pacific, 6 Eastern for the Wayne S. Pierce Show and the Views Express live today on Spreaker.com and on freeamericaradio.us. Talk to you later.